Thanks for joining us for another edition of Communication Steroids, the weekly podcast that shows you how to become a better public speaker, a more effective presenter, and a conscious and clear communicator. This is where you can find tips, tools, and techniques that you can put to use today. Here are your hosts of Communication Steroids, Tim Gonzo-Gordon and Roger Pike. How's it look for you over there, huh? How does what look for me over here? Uh, the view. <laughs> I see a computer. And you I see yourself see on the you. screen. I see myself on the screen. Yes. And hey, look at this. Property of? Trailblazers. Hellblazers. All right. So it's the podcast here. We kind of loosely got into that. Did you notice that? I did. We kind of snuck you know, up on of, the kind introduction. Kind of impressive the way we did that, actually. Yeah. It's you know, it's like uh, you're you're trying to pick up the girl at the bar, and before you even she even knows it, you've already you know made a few great uh, uh, moves, which of course <laughs> she doesn't even know because they're so smooth. Yeah. And subtle. Subtle. Well, anyway. Never. No, we're, we're both so well known it, for our yeah, subtlety. It never worked for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Tim Gordon, and I'm Roger Pike, and it's the podcast from. Communication steroids. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You can do both, as a matter of fact, though, because we're on the tube. And I wanted to bring up something which is actually always been one of my biggest challenges in preparing a speech and delivering a speech, and that is the conclusion. The conclusion can be the toughest thing of all, and it, you know, I, I think of maybe the two lines that are toughest to write: the first line and the last line. Uh, are always seems to seem to be the ones that give you the most trouble. And in, in a sense, that's right, because the first thing you say, the first seven to ten seconds, people form an impression of you. And and they've already made up their mind whether they're going to enjoy what you're going to do and or, or, the, or pay attention. What your mother always said is right. You never get a second chance <laughs> to make a first impression. Your mother said that? My mother said oh. that. My okay. mother said a lot of things. I don't know if she ever said that. <laughs> uh, but the, the other thing, of course, is that the end of the speech, mm -hmm. leave them with... Something that makes them remember you, and something that uh, is is powerful, right. and that's always been hard for me to figure out what that powerful thing is. Call to action, whatever the statement may be. So something that makes them feel something or want to do something. So let's talk about a conclusion, and I'm uh, going from a few notes here. So if I look down, and you're you're not, and you're, you're, of course, if you're listening to the podcast, you won't notice this. But if you're watching that on the TV, at, you know the screen, you'll notice I'm looking down. And well, since you did the research reading. on this one, I'm going to look up the <laughs> whole time. So uh, a conclusion needs to accomplish a few specific goals. It needs to uh, summarize the main ideas so mm -hmm. that. If someone missed the very beginning or wasn't paying attention to a couple points in there, they catch it all. You just refresh their yeah. memory. Uh, complete the sense of form by anticipating the end of the speech. In other words, you don't just end abruptly like that. And you go, oh, it's over. And they go, oh, what? Uh, uh, what? Yeah, how many speeches have you heard that have ended? Because I've heard a few that have ended, well, well, that's all, or I'm done, or, and they just, or, or they just kind of peter out. And yeah, no, in fact, no uh, closure. I, I don't remember exactly who I was listening to. It was a... It was a uh, uh, discussion about speeches and some famous guy like Brian Tracy or someone that said you know the very first speech he ever ended when he was a professional paid speaker was he got there and he really didn't know how to end it so he gets to the point and he stops talking he goes uh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> and then he said later he says never say thank you as your last thing no never 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 thank your audience or apologize to your audience ever yeah and finally you want to make a final appeal to the audience which is a great thing to do in your conclusion so um, you know, you want to complete the sense of form by anticipating the end. Uh, obviously, you can do some transitions in there by saying, and in conclusion, or finally, I'd like to say, uh, lead up to it. Right. Or knowing that it's a 20-minute speech and you're at the 18-minute mark, mm -hmm. people are going to be checking their watches. And if you give a nice pause right there and so, sort of do some actual, you know, if you, you can actually take a deep breath or do something physical that gives them a cue that the end is coming. So foreshadow yeah. the ending. Yeah. Um, so that would be one thing. Uh, summarize your main ideas. You know, it's, uh, that's what a conclusion is all about, is to summarize why you were there, what you're doing. Um, you know, also make a final appeal to the audience. Now, I like the whole call of action thing. You know, you've talked about uh, ending a speech with a very strong call to action. Yes, many, many times. times. Mm -hmm. So what, what works for you in a call to action? Well, I, I like to have two things in a conclusion. I like to have one thing that people can do right away. Uh, I, and I always look for something that, that, you know, that they can go back to their desk and do that minute. And then I, I, I want them to uh, 
in, in a call to action, I want them to take whatever is the main topic of my speech and have something that's so memorable about it, something that's so compelling about it, that they feel, uh, they feel compelled, they feel urged uh, to continue on with other research or to, uh, or to actually you know, make a donation if you're calling yeah. for, for that kind of thing or go out and buy the product. I mean, I mean heck, that's, that's the whole idea. That's the whole point, right, is we're, if, we're, if, we're yeah, teaching Yeah, and the product may be uh, an actual product where they're getting money out, or the product may be you're selling them on a belief that you want them to see or a point of view right, you're that you strongly selling something. believe in. Yeah. Uh, uh, Al Gore's uh, famous inconvenient truth uh, was wanting you to see a point of view and mm-hmm. a belief system that he built and, and showed all this uh, information. And he didn't want you to go out and buy anything at that no. point. He just wanted you to believe what he was talking about. Yeah. And when you did buy, buy smaller cars. I mean, that was <laughs> <laughs> that was his point. But but not yeah. big houses like he had, right? No, uh, <laughs> you need to decide before you launch into the speech while you're still writing it. What is it that you want want, want your audience to take away from the speech? And then the very last line, your call to action has to sell them on that thing. Uh, you know, not some sub point somewhere in the speech, or not something else. Uh, or, or not even your good looks. I mean, you want to sell them on whatever you decided from the beginning was what you wanted your audience to take from that speech and where you wanted to lead them. And the 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 the, the closing has to be the closing the deal. And it's been suggested that a strong quote that relates very uh, well to what you're discussing mm-hmm. is also a good close. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a quote is not a bad thing to consider if you're still searching for that uh, killer close, you know, mm-hmm. as it were. Uh, make a personal reference. One of the things that I like to do. Oh, I'm sorry. You, Let's you, go ahead. You had a, you had an outline there. One of the things that I like to do is 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 have a powerful first line that is repeatable, because uh, we know that repetition uh, yeah. uh, builds persuasion, and you repeat it throughout the speech, and 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 it's repeatable creatively to the point where you can also make it your last line or nearly your last line. Uh, and that that's one of the ways that I like to, to, to close a speech, and so the, my call to action is usually the first line of the speech and the last line are close to it. And you might, for instance, if you want to use a personal reference, as I was uh, mentioning, that mm-hmm. uh, you could bring something out that really illustrates it that is personal to you. If you're talking right. about how great rock music is and how it changed the 60s and all that, you might bring out and show a collection of two or three records that changed your life, or whatever the case may be. It's a, a personal reference that, that shows how you were affected by what you're talking about, not just an abstract thing. This is yeah. how I've been impacted by this. Yeah. A personal story, uh, uh, particularly if you can make it a story rather than just you know some sort of brief line, uh, if you can turn it into a story and, and spend a minute on it, a personal story is always a compelling thing. People love that. Yeah, and challenging the audience is, is a, a good thing to do depending on the circumstances. Challenge them to go do something that really uh, is important. Can you help? Yeah. I mean, that, uh, there, there's nothing wrong with asking that question at the end of a speech. Can you help? I mean, and, and, and making sure that your audience know how, how important that it is that they help. I mean, a call to action, a little mini speech that has a great call to action, and you see them all the time, particularly on late night television, are the, are the children's fund commercials. Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. You, for a dime a day, can sponsor this child and give it clean water. And then the last line is, is if this child were in front of you now, couldn't you give it a dime a day or couldn't you spare a dime a day for this child if it were in front of you now? Right. And it is. Yes. That's their call to action. That's their call to action, yeah. It's beautiful. So to prepare a conclusion, uh, be thinking about that through the entire preparation process of your speech. Uh, work on the conclusion after v- developing the body of your speech. Again, it helps to know what you are concluding. So you should really have that as sort of a concept as you're developing the whole speech. What do right. I really want people to do and how can I make that happen? All the way through from beginning yeah. to end. Connect the conclusion clearly to the body mm-hmm. of the speech so that listeners will grasp how it relates to all your main ideas. Uh, keep the conclusion relatively brief so it doesn't you know, overwhelm or detract from the speech itself. This has got to be a short, succinct, powerful message right. at the very end. Uh, aim for a complete conclusion, including a wrap-up of your major ideas and clear indication of how you want listeners to respond. So, <laughs> summarize your argument memorably and tell the audience what belief or action that you're looking for yep so, there you go so that covers we'll it. conclude here um how's your conclusion tonight by the way <laughs> <laughs> we can conclude anyway what you know why because this is not a speech we're done yeah <laughs> thanks for joining us it's the podcast from communication steroids if you haven't been on our website lately you've just been downloading this on the itunes for instance uh check it out a lot of great stuff there uh free programs and as well as some stuff that you could actually invest in 
to make yourself a better communicator and a better speaker. It's all right there. That's what we do. Over there is Roger Pike, and over there is Tim Gordon. Thanks. <laughs>